Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. has been a pretty busy couple of days. We had quite a windstorm come through and I spent most of the day today repairing damage and that type of thing from the windstorm. Things are nice and calm now, thank goodness. And I am just getting started on uh, putting together our, uh, our Woodland Mills uh, wood chipper. So I now have it hooked up to the tractor I've got this, it comes with one hydraulic line not hooked up. So I've got that hooked up. I've got it on. So what I'm going to do now uh, is just start the tractor up and pick it up. Now I don't have the uh, PTO shaft installed or anything. So there's no issue there. So we're just trying to work out height at this point in time. And then we're going to just go along step by step with this manual and get everything put together. But there we are, we are now actually hooked up to the PTO properly and it's now sitting on its base the way it should be. Uh, one other little uh, hint for you, don't put the oil in it yet. It takes a lot of oil and that's gonna add a lot of weight to it. So you don't need the oil, you don't even have the PTO shaft hooked up. So leave the oil out for now. All right, guys, so there is our uh, first day uh, working at this. So actually, I've only been at it for maybe an hour and a half now. So we've got the chute all assembled and ready to go. This thing is really built, holy mackerel, heavy duty. So I think for the time being, um, because it is getting a little late in the day, what we're going to do is call it quits for today. And then hopefully, weather permitting, we'll be right back at this tomorrow. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, folks. We are uh, back at another day of work. Sarah and I have been out for a walk and it is a lovely day today. And I was going to continue on with the chipper, but things have changed. It looks like we have got several days of rain coming in. So I am just going to leave this for the time being, take the forks off the front, get the grapple back on, and get the sawmill running again. I try to get in about a day and a half worth of cutting if I can. Because this is now on the tractor, I can quite easily just come back here uh, and leave the tractor in here and work on this during the rain. So that is the plan. We're gonna take advantage of the sun and uh, get things going up at the mill. I just want to keep a few wedges around. They're really handy. 
Well, we're ready to go. This will be one by eights. So my plan is to work through the eight footers now and then go back to the 10 footers. All right, let's get things running, warmed up and get to cutting.
Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying this video. And if you have, don't forget to give it a like. And I'd really love to have you to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any thoughts, questions, suggestions, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the work. Well, folks, the weather has turned on us again. I didn't quite get all of the eight footers done. I've got one left, but it was getting too windy and the rain was starting and it was just getting to the point where it wasn't safe to continue with the uh, sawmill. So because I have now got the uh, chipper actually mounted on the tractor, I just brought the tractor into its uh, parking dome here and we will continue working on the chipper from here. So I've got the uh, loading chute on. Man, this stuff is heavy duty, but it needs to be because it's going to take a real pounding without a doubt. So we're just going to continue moving forward with this and uh, hopefully get it all assembled and ready. So keep in mind here that I'm not doing a how-to video on putting this together. I'm not necessarily a big fan of that kind of thing. To me, unless you are truly an expert on the, uh, on the subject matter as to how to assemble and troubleshoot that type of thing on the piece of equipment or whatever it is that's being assembled, uh, you should not be doing a how-to video on it. That should be left to the experts to do. And I'm not an expert on this. This is the first one I've put together like this and the first PTO-driven chipper I have used myself. So. It's for me, I learn as you go. And I'm just sharing my experience with you as I go along. And if I see anything blatantly obvious that could get you into trouble, I'll mention it. Some of this stuff is pretty awkward to do when you're on your own. I can certainly see how it would be possible to get that on backwards. So you got to be sure which way you're going here with it. And I need to go back into the shop and get some more tools and get you guys out of the rain. Well, folks, there she is basically assembled. Now I've got two watch outs for you. This chute, your chute here, there is a right way and a wrong way to put it on. Now, you can see this has a little offset. Now it's very easy to put it on the other way around. So you've got this clip on the back side here and I put it on that way thinking, well, it's just gonna be easier to have that in an easier place to reach. But if you do that, you then cannot fold this up properly because it hits the chute. So, so much for that. Um, one other thing, I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do about this yet. There's a grease fitting right there. Not in a great place. I think I can still get to it. But if they had just turned this bearing uh, 90 degrees, you would have the grease fitting sticking out at you rather than where it is, which I don't think is that great. But pretty sure I can still get to it. And I still have, I guess, one other thing. Now, I wanted to be able to pull my trailer along behind this thing. I thought it would be quite easy uh, to have the trailer with me. Now, my initial thinking was completely off base. I was thinking I could pull the trailer along and then just load stuff into the chipper and blow it straight into the trailer as it's riding along behind the tractor. Now I was thinking of the other style chipper I have. I've got one with a uh, little six horsepower motor on it. Uh, that 
does quite good. I've had it for a long time, but uh, has really been a challenge to use. So realizing that, I thought, okay, that's still fine. I can take the uh, wagon with me, set it up, and just blow the chips into the wagons with it set up beside the chipper. And that's fine. I mean, there, there wouldn't be uh, an issue with that. But after I put this hitch on, I saw an issue. Can you guys see it? Now, there are different mounting holes on here. But in order to get the uh, PTO shaft running as straight as possible from the drive of the tractor back to the drive here of the chipper, I needed to have my feet set in the location that they're in now. If I was to raise everything up in order to lower the feet, then it would be too high. It would be running on an angle and it would also greatly reduce the amount of room I had to lift it with. So I really don't have a choice but to have it in this position. But as soon as you put that ball on, it becomes really obvious what the problem is. There's the forward and reverse lever right there. And guess what? That's completely in the way. So that is a real nuisance, and I'm kind of surprised that uh, this came like this from Woodland Mills. I would have thought that uh, they would have had a different kind of arrangement or something like that for these small subcompact tractors, which is what this chipper is made for. Because I just can't put it up that high. I can't uh, have the support for that down as low as what you would need to make it work. Now what I am probably going to do is drill another hole in this over to the side. It's not like I'm pulling a huge amount of weight, but I'll have to uh, weld a patch over top of that hole because I don't want that to be weak. And that would be fine. I'll put it over to this side uh, just so it's not in the way of hoses or anything. And that's fine. I mean, that's doable, but they should have had it figured out and had an option for that. Big surprise from Woodland Mills. That's the first real uh, kind of fall down that I have seen on their part. So this issue with the hitch just didn't seem right to me. So I decided to give Woodland Mills a call and talk to them about it before doing anything like welding or drilling or anything in uh, what they sent me. And they were very quick to say that, yes, that they're aware of the problem. They have a fix for it and they are going to ship me out that piece, no charge or anything like that. So they're out of stock on them right now, unfortunately, but as soon as they have them, they're going to send one to me. And that should take care of that. Thank goodness. Yeah, I would have been really surprised if uh, Woodland Mills had let that slip by, but obviously they know about it, they fixed it, and good for them. So that's going to be it for today's video, folks. We uh, are interrupted by the rain, but still managed to get a lot done. There's just one eight-footer uh, of my logs up there left to saw. We have this thing basically assembled, a couple of little bugs yet to work out. I still don't have any oil in it, and I have not yet cut the uh, PTO jack shaft uh, to its finished length, but that's fine. I don't need this yet. I just wanted to get it assembled and on here because top priority is still getting up there and getting that one eight footer and the remaining 10 foot logs done. I want to get all of that done and out of the way, and we're doing really well, but <laughs> the weather has interfered with that. Well, that's okay. We've got a few things to do in the shop. I've got a heck of a mess in there uh, to clean up. And I've got a few things to do inside. So we'll see how long the rain lasts and how long I'm stuck inside before I can get back to work. Anyway, 
I hope you folks have been finding the videos interesting, maybe a little bit entertaining. And if you have, please give them a like and don't forget to share it around. Maybe there is someone else you know who might find it interesting. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. I want to say a really big thank you to all my most recent subscribers that have pushed me over the 1000 mark and we're continuing to roll on and the channel is really doing great. I'm very happy with that. So remember to be good to each other out there. Stay safe and we will see you out on the trails the next time. We're almost there.